So Adam's working on cleating the bottom of the head. Apparently, you only have 2,000 of an inch of give on here, and you do not want to scuff up the head like as much as possible. Like even rubbing Scotch Brite on this will probably take a thousandth off. So just be really careful when you're dealing with any of cleaning of the head and whatnot. That's why decking heads is such an important job. When you do like metal head gasket swaps and stuff, you really need to make sure your machine shop knows what he's doing. Cause if they don't, your motor can be completely fucked. After you clean the cylinder head, you just use your precision straight edge. We have a feeler gauge here at one and a half valve. Try and see if I can get the slide in, and you can see around the chambers. Snack doesn't go. That is so cool. All good, brother. Nice. I'm definitely gonna be having to do this type of work on my car, so it's very, very nice to get like a nice little warm up class with Adam Sadotari. So in a normal engine, what we want to do is, of course, we want to check the deck of the block. But on my particular engine, we really don't want to pull the studs if we don't have to. And in this particular case, the fire rings are the seal. So that is where we want to check. It's the most important place. So we take our precision straight edge again and lay it across the top of the rings. And then, of course, we still use a feeler gauge. We got one and a half thou, which is well within tolerance right there. We're not getting anything pushing through at all on any of the fire rings, okay? Therefore, everything's solid. And we do it in three different directions just to make sure. And as fast as I can here, not to bore you to death. <laughs> okay. okay. Nah, they but it is stuff, important dude. for us. So it's basically the equivalent of doing it on the deck. We're just doing it on the rings and we are good to go. So we flip the block over and everyone always wants to know if the block is moved. Well, the quickest way that I can always tell is I use precision straight edge again and I lay it across where the main bearing seat and then we use a feeler gauge again, okay? So right here, it's best to be in the center if possible. Okay, when I slide in, I can feel it's slightly snagging, which makes me believe there's about a thou of clearance, plus or minus. You should go what the book says. Uh, on myself, I go on my own experience. I know I run larger main to journal clearance, so if I hit around three or four thou, I would probably need to line bore. Mm -hmm. when the, you have the machine shop do that. When they do it, they put all the main caps on, they torque everything down to spec, and they bore right through the center of the block. Very, very cool information, man. Adam earlier was just explaining to me all the gap clearances and what it means. And basically when he's testing it, um, that's basically thousands of an inch of it warping or changing. So usually you want it to be at zero, like he said, because it's a race engine, he's a little more comfortable with a little bit more room. But typically if you're going based off the service manual, usually they only want maybe a thousandths to a thousandths and a half, right, of warpage before you have to line board again. But, dude, this is such useful information, especially for when I work on my blown SR, which is probably gonna happen in the very, very near future. So here, Adam went ahead and set up the rig to measure how straight the crankshaft bearing is, right, correct? Correct, we need to check the run out. Okay? Okay. So eccentric shaft, crankshaft, it's all the same. So on the NSX, it's we use the two precision blocks, V blocks, that's mm -hmm. the best way that I know. And we set up the two consistent surfaces. We need to check each main journal to make sure to see if it's within spec. The max spec for a factory engine is 12 thou. On my race engine, I'll allow 15 thou. So we can start by turning very slowly and seeing how it goes. So you can see right here on the dial indicator, we're at zero. Each dash is a tenth of a thou. Each number is actually a thou. So I will slowly turn it and let's see what happens. As we can go and see, this crankshaft is very straight on this journal compared to what I usually see. Okay, we're getting some variance there. One second. Plus or minus. Nice. Around a half thou. Coming back. We passed 180 degrees. Coming back up. And when you do this, take your time. Don't be in a rush there. The max we saw is plus or minus around a half thou. Not even a problem for that journal. So we do need to check all four, but yes. at least for a start, 
It's amazing. That is crazy. So the factory manual says it allows 12 thousandths of an inch of play. That's correct. We're not even like half a thousand. Yeah, we're, that's we're, we're, insane. We're minimal. We're minimal. So yeah, that's really that's, good. Yeah, that's that's cool. really good. And this this is factory, right? It's factory. And you've 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 ran this crank before? Yes, this crank has been run before. So, damn. So crankshafts or Honda crankshafts are pretty amazing. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, learning so much, it's crazy. Yeah, it's just, and all this stuff, bro, just transferred right over to your rotary. It's the same thing. Same Center thing, shaft, huh? crankshaft. It's awesome. Dude, this is pure knowledge, guys. <clears throat> pure racer knowledge, race car knowledge, whatever you want to call it. This is really good to know. And just learning this is like the fundamentals of like engines, really. All right, guys, so we are on the second journal, right, Adam? That's correct. And it looks like we got half a thou right now. This one has a little bit more, we're about a thou out. There it goes. Okay. Just over a thou, looks like I'm gonna spin it back. It's almost exactly a thou. And that is pretty normal because like you said, the center journals are gonna have the most, I guess you could say wear. Yes. Because it bows technically, if you think of the crankshaft as each end being a node as it rotates at higher PMs, I mean, it makes sense, the, the, the center of it would bow out, so. For those of you with a keen eye, that saw it flip back to 1,000, you weren't imagining that. The reason why is it moved a little bit on the B block. So anytime you see anything that looks out of the ordinary, make sure you're squared up. Okay, yeah. Man around again, we're good. Okay. Nice. Let's go to the next one, number three. I'm suspecting this is gonna be maybe a thousandth off too. And then over here on this channel, I'm suspecting maybe half or less, possibly none. <laughs> it's pretty hard to get none, right? <laughs> it's pretty hard. We are diving deep into the engine world, guys. I hope you guys are enjoying the content so far, getting down with it, and I'm super stoked that he is sharing all this information with us, just to kinda let you guys know what it's like to get into engine work and what you gotta look out for and making sure all your parts aren't warped and that they're working properly. What? Dead on. <laughs> Dead on. Not even a thousand. I lost that bet. So Adam is testing the fourth channel. Yep, definitely moving. That's okay, so what's great that that happened, what it is is you saw me zero it out. But what happened was, is it wasn't exactly squared off on the V-box. So what I did is I moved it back forward, and then I spun it, and then I referenced our top, basically our top dead center of where mm -hmm. we started, mm -hmm. and it was actually at nine. So if you were watching really close, mm -hmm. the runout was only two tenths of a thou off. Wow. Because we spun it, and nine was actually a reference point. So when I moved and squared it, gotcha. you used that as your reference point. Gotcha. Makes so sense. Everything is good. Nice. True. Now, the other thing you have to remember, though, you always have to take everything in perspective. So if you have any sort of marks or any sort of bearing transfer, it's gonna throw off your measurements. So just okay. always keep that in mind. So if you mm -hmm. look at the journal real close, you can take that into your calculations. Mm -hmm. So it's not always 100% mm -hmm. that the runout's out on your crank. Makes sense. Just gotta feel it out and use reference points. One of the most important aspects of building the engine is main bearing clearance. Rod bearing clearance is important as well, but let's start with the main bearing clearance and how to get it. So I'm just gonna go through it real quick all right, so everyone figures out what's the best size for them. You wanna measure the journals, okay? And we'll use a micrometer, and you just basically just look for the center. Spin it up, and a good micrometer will give you the load. Once it's locked down like that, you can take that measurement number. You'll write it down, then you'll go to the block. Then you wanna put everything together to measure over there. So we'll head over there right now, and I'll show you that. So what we did over here is, we put one main cap on. We left everything else open so you could see because it's very difficult to see with everything closed up. If you were gonna do this job, what you need to do is put all the main caps in, torque everything in the bottom and down. That way you can get an accurate reading. You want one of these to measure the bore size, okay? These are a great tool. You'll use it a lot when you're building engines. You'll stick it into the bore, you'll measure the distance, and you'll rock it back and forth. As it rocks back and forth, that gives you the distance of the bore, the diameter. You take that diameter minus the bearing journal diameter, and that gives you your bearing clearance. All engines have their own spec. The NSX starts very small, probably around a thou and a half. As we worked our way up, we ended up at around five thou. So everything that we just talked about 
um, as far as the bore. These bearings, at least for this motor, they're not really number referenced for sizing. So they're all just different colors. Like this one's a pink? That's correct. So that one's a pink, they have yellows and greens. So what you have to do is, you, if you were to do this properly, is torque down the main cap, right? With the color-coded bearings, like say you put a yellow on there, you'd have to measure the bore with the bearing and make sure that it's as close as possible to the journal size on the crankshaft. I hope that made sense, but that is such a lengthy process, and Adam already knows which bearings belong on here with the journal sizes. So we're not gonna go ahead and bore you guys with all that work and information. We're just gonna go ahead and tell you how to do it and so that you guys can be all along your way to building a 1300 horsepower NSX motor. Sounds good, right? <laughs> also guys, keep in mind that the numbers that were thrown at you guys are based on this motor that was specifically built for higher revving. Well, it's a drag motor. So yeah. keep in mind that we don't have the warm up like a normal car would have. So. Mm -hmm. We want clearance, more mm -hmm. clearance. And mm -hmm. for all of you that are gonna build your own engines, more clearance is always better than not enough. So I'll give you a quick example. So let's say for instance, your manual said you want 3000s clearance on the main bearings. Mm -hmm. When you go in there, a lot of times you cannot get exactly 3000. So if you're gonna go under or over, meaning if you had to go two and a half or three and a half, more clearance is always better than not enough. Gotcha, thank you, that makes a lot of sense. It's good to have your service manual guys so you can reference and see what the manual says here because we are running a stock crankshaft we can go ahead and refer to the service manual and what their specs are so the next step is rod bearing clearance same procedure we take the micrometer this is journal number one okay we come on down it's got an auto detent we can feel right there is a point we would log our measurement there. Then we would come over to the rod. You can see the rod here, the rod bearing in there. Now, the cap is not torqued down. It's all mocked up just so you guys can see what's going on. You would need to torque it down to the exact spec. Okay, over there you saw we used a dial bore gauge. Mm -hmm. Here, this is still a bore gauge. It's just very, very small. Mm -hmm. No room for the dial indicator, okay? And then we send it into the bore. Once it's torqued down, we get the measurements and you're looking for just a finite amount of resistance. And that's about it. Pull it out, log your measurement, take the journal, subtract it. That'll give you your clearance. And for us, we're looking for 3,000 clearance. So, and that's specific towards this motor that's would True. be pushing 1,300 horsepower. You always want to reference your service manual. And like I said, all my measurements, anyone who is super keen on the NSX engine mm -hmm. is going to know these are bigger. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's because it's a race engine. Awesome. That is sick. Thank you, Adam. Cool, brother. Dude, this is so much information to digest for me. I'm just like, ah, oh, like, I try to it's reference painful, it. Man. <laughs> no, 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 I, I really enjoy it. No, this is super cool. I'm like trying to like calculate all these numbers in my head and then deliver it to you guys. So it's like calculus class, man, <laughs> but it's cool. So we're back on the crankshaft. We're gonna check to see that the main journals aren't out of round. I'll explain how to do that. We can see right here though, the service limit is two tenths of a thou. It's very, very tight. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you wanna check out around, what we're basically gonna do is check in the center of the crank, right? And we position it in the center right there and we're right about two, 519 thou, and then we're gonna go ahead and turn it roughly 90 degrees, just above there. And again, we wanna stay on the center, okay? Right there. Two inches, 519 thou. It is exactly on the money. So we're good there. The second thing we need to check is for taper of the journal, okay? And I'm looking right here, the service limit is four tenths of a thou. All right, I need to rotate the crankshaft to make room for the micrometer, okay? So what we'll do is we'll start on the outside of the journal, right there. Mm -hmm. Same thing, two inches higher than I can down, and then we'll go into the center right here and see where we're at. It's exact. So, we know for sure we don't have any taper. We're solid. So nice. Right now, continue moving forward. Awesome. Okay, so we're still prepping the block to get everything ready to put everything back together. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna check the bore. Mm -hmm. You always wanna take a visual of the bore. You can see these are all in really good shape. You don't see any scoring of anything. Um, typically, if you see some light scrapes, you can just hone it. 
Uh, other than that, then you have to consider doing deeper work at the machine shop, but they can always advise you on that. But the bore remaining straight within spec and also... <laughs> Sorry, dude. You want to take that off? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, guys. Fuck. <laughs> okay, so the not yet released hoodie is now off. <laughs> Let's continue. Yeah, we can add. I'm sorry. Now the hoodie situation is under control. <laughs> yeah. Got some citrus salt on you. Also, you know, feeling good? Thank you. I'm oh, good. Yeah, Thank I, you. I was afraid he might commit suicide. It was like insanity. I was like, oh my god, what happened? Oh, oh that's what happened. That's what it's okay. it's the hoodie's not released okay. yet, man. It's All a really right. really nice Understood. one. Understood. Understood. All right. Gentlemen, back to business. And ladies, back to business. Okay. <laughs> what we need to do is we need to check the bore. Okay, so we're, we're going to check the cylinder. Okay, what we're trying to make sure here is that. It isn't wearing like crazy up in the area where the piston's riding in the rings and everything, or it's actually could be opening up. Okay, so again, we take our, our bore gauge here, the dial indicator, we're going to stick it in the cylinder. Okay, and you want to just be nice and easy. It's all on wheels and ball bearings, so it's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, you get down to your low reference point below where the skirt is. Okay, and you just kind of situate it like this, and then you can lightly. Undo the adjusting screw, and you want to pull it up, zero it out as close as you can. A little bit too far, there we go, okay. Right there, we're zeroed out. And then we just slowly work our way up the cylinder, and we just keep moving it and watching it, okay. So we got about a half thou variance there. Less than a half thou. And what you're doing is you're rocking it back and forth, so then it kind of oscillates so it goes up and then down and the very tip of that measurement is basically the gap, right? The difference. That is correct. So just so you guys can see what we're talking about, he's rocking it back and forth just like that as he's working his way up and he is seeing where it peaks out and that's basically the spacing in that section. Okay. And good news, everything is good as we expected. There was less than a thou variance, so the cylinder's in very good shape. Awesome. You just go line to line, check them all, and if there's any problems, again, you gotta make a decision. But the machine shop's the best bet to advise if you see any problems. Awesome. So we just demonstrated how to measure the difference from the bottom to the top, uh, but we only showed it in one direction. We just looked at the service manual, and it looks like you have to make an X. So you measure it going this way, and then you gotta measure it going this way. So you have two directions on the X axis and the Y axis to make sure that it is perfectly perfectly round, I guess. And yeah, you just do that on all six cylinders, and you should be good to go. And the limit was, what did it say, Adam? Two thousand. It's two thousand. So we were way under two thousand, we were a whole thousand um, in, the, in the clear, so. Yeah, guys, this shit's fun, man. Can't wait to build my SR. Okay, guys, so. The next thing that we're doing is we're measuring the piston to cylinder wall clearance. So what we did already was we took the piston, held it up against the micrometer right here, as you guys can see, and we took down that measurement with the micrometer and we got a value of 92.8 millimeters. Next up, what we did was we took this nice tool right here, which is spring-loaded. We stuck it in, tightened it, and got the cylinder wall distance. Took that out, took it up against the micrometer, measured that, and got a value of 93.065 millimeters. We went ahead and converted this to thousandths of an inch just because that's the unit we're comfortable with working with. We got a difference of eight thou, which is actually pretty good, according to Adam, for this engine in particular, correct? That's correct, that's our target. Okay, awesome. So now that we know the piston to cylinder wall clearance, we can go ahead and start moving on to the rings. So Adam is kind enough to let me go ahead and show you guys how to properly install the rings on the piston and how to file them according to the bore size in the cylinder. So first what we wanna do is, if you guys have a bottle of oil, we're gonna go ahead and put some oil on our fingers and go ahead and oil up the cylinder. It's already pre-oiled up already, but a little extra doesn't hurt. So you wanna put the back end of the ring first Pinch it, 
and not mess up the cylinder walls. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go about an inch to maybe a half inch down. Just like that and get it as even as possible. And I think that looks pretty good. And next, what we're gonna do, we're gonna get our filler gauge. We're gonna take the, was it 2,000? 200. That is the gap that you want on your ring. So if we come up to the gap on the ring, right here you're gonna see where the ring pinches together, that gap. So before you measure it, try and make sure it's level. And then we're gonna take our filler gauge and make sure that we can stick the filler gauge in the hole. So here, um, it needs to be grinded down because the filler gauge does not wanna stick in. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the ring out gently because you don't wanna mess up the cylinder walls. Pull this out and we're gonna head over to the machine shop section and go ahead and file this down. So here we have a ring filer. Definitely gonna need one of these if you're gonna be building your motor. And just work one side at a time and try as best as you can, file it evenly on each side. So we just filed it down. I'm gonna go back to the motor and check. Another thing that Adam um, informed me on that's kind of important is make sure when you're filing this ring, uh, you wanna do it away from the block because you don't want any of the debris from the ring to get in the motor. That would probably cause a problem long term. So, that looks pretty good. Almost there. It's tugging a little bit. So, we're going to go back, file a bit more, and uh, just keep that process going until you get it just right. And then at the very end, what we need to do is we need to file out these bottom edges right here and kind of round it out. So in order to get the ring on the piston, you're, you are gonna need a special tool. Um, it's kind of like a ring clamping tool that makes it very easy, easy to slip it into the piston. Make sure you have that tool so you can do it and you should be squared away. So we got the shop all cleaned up. We have all the parts laid out on the table. And this table over here and the engine is wrapped up because we are wrapping it up for tonight. So I wanna thank you guys so much for making it to the end of the video if you guys did. And don't forget to subscribe to this gentleman over here. He's been teaching me a lot, been able to teach you guys a lot as well. So make sure you show Adam some love and subscribe, especially if you wanna see more technical content like this. Just keep your fingers crossed and hopefully Adam will do something with this beautiful car over here. Who knows? We'll <laughs> see. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Thank you guys. Really. Christian's like the best. It was a team effort. Yeah. Team effort. That's what it was. Yeah, I was holding the camera and like assisting Please, him. Man. Come on, man. <laughs> this guy's a man. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. So we're going to go ahead and save the assembly video for tomorrow. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.